So before I begin, um, I'd like to thank the organizers of this session um, uh, and their patience with my changing schedule and making this connection work uh, across the ocean in a couple of time zones. Uh, the fantastic opportunity to present some of my data and thoughts on textile production. Um, so let's get into it. Wait a second. I'm trying to fix the the volume. Okay. Oh, okay. Go on. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> um, so this paper has a threefold aim: uh, to present the diachronic evidence for textile production recovered over the previous decade of excavations of the Latin site of Gabi, uh, evidence covering roughly a thousand years of Gabite history. Uh, to use this diachronic evidence um, from our excavations to examine changes in textile production across what I like to call the site's urbanizing boundary, uh, this fuzzy line when the city moves fr from a group of proto-urban communities to a more unified and definable urban entity. Uh, and finally, to focus in on a pattern that is clear at Gabi, but also seems to be evident across the Italian peninsula, the disappearance of a particular suite of textile production tools and probably the associated production system spools, tablets, and tablet weaving. Act of Forgetting uh, offers an informative case study for understanding the relationship between community formation, craft production, and urbanization. I'm trying to make sure the slides are changing. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> the site that would become the Latin city of Gavi is located in central Latia, ancient Latia, approximately 18 kilometers southeast of Rome, along the ancient Via Prinestina. Moderately famous in our Latin literary sources for stone quarries, baths, special auguries, and particular toga style, at its urban height, Gavi occupied about 70 hectares of the slope of an extinct volcano. Over the past 12 years, the Gavi project, under the auspices of the University of Michigan, has a significant portion of the city center, discovering architecture and finds dating from the Bronze Age to the medieval period. Although there is occasional evidence for Bronze Age activity in the area, it is our hope that our excavations will reveal Bronze Age occupation positively. Initial occupation of Gavi can be more securely dated to the early Iron Age, a period where social reorganization appears to be reflected in spatial reorganization across Italy and Central Italy. A majority of bronze, late Bronze Age settlements were abandoned and populations came together at the sites that would undergo the process of state and urban formation in the fall of the century. Archaeological survey over the last half century has suggested that these initial occupations were either contiguous or continuous. Instead, they were broken into different nodal occupation points across, um, scattered across the landscape, each node likely representing a group tied together by actual or fictive kinship relations. Perhaps best represented in relation by Guaitoli's survey work at Gavi in the 1970s, here on the left, my left, I think also your left. Um, and the Eddie Sestieri's publication of the Necropolis of Ostero Delosa across the volcanic crater lake in Gavi. This work suggested just the type of multinodal settlement pattern um, at the site during the early Iron Age. Environmental considerations and survey biases alone cannot explain the pre prevalence of this pattern at numerous sites with varying topographies and land cover. What must be the case is that we are seeing an intermediate form of social engagement between different groups. It is no longer the Bronze Age of the late second millennium with its scattered fortified hilltop settlements, a hectare or two in size, and each rep likely representing a single one of these groups. We are all not at the urban state that first arrives at some Italian polities already in the late sixth century, complete with massive temples on stone podia and national city walls, that arrives at Gavi, it seems, in the fourth century with the imposition of an urban grid and the construction of fortification walls, acts of community which acts of a community which has grown together to engage in mutually enacted monumental works. Instead, in the Iron Age, this is an, has been made to join together to a degree. This creates a variety of questions for how this kind of settlement strategy must have actually functioned in everyday life, when your nearest neighbors are tens of meters away rather than tens of kilometers. These tensions between nodal group and the larger community, as well as tensions within nodal groups, is evident in the decision to move, choice which must have been agreed upon on an inter- and intra-group level, with, as we see from survey data, some groups choosing not to be part of this experimental situation. Mechanisms for tying these individual groups together and avenues of negotiation for eventually forming urban communities out of the scattered but like parts must have existed. 
Textile production evidence from Gavi suggests textile production evidence from Gavi suggests is one crucial mechanism of this negotiation. So at Gavi, our estimations of so-called area C and D, here are the kind of cutout, uh, which I that might make it clearer. I don't. I hope you can kind of see that a little better. Um, is it particularly relevant for understanding social, economic, and other dynamics during this pre-urban formative period? The so-called area CD complex represented one of the few parent age total occupation areas which has been excavated from any central Italian site. And in particular, our excavations have revealed the elite core of this type of settlement. The not fully surviving due to a Republican period cistern dug in the middle of the node, we are able to recognize a series of, phase, series of phases spanning the Iron Age and post-archaic periods, about the 8th to late 5th centuries BCE, that followed an established pattern of development, um, quote-unquote, from huts to houses. Okay. The initial occupation took place in the 8th century, beginning as a cluster of small, smaller huts. It was then redeveloped with larger hut structures, circumscribed an enclosure wall in the... 7th century. In the late 7th to early 6th century, a stone-built complex replaced the hut and continued to be modified until its abandonment in the late 6th to early 5th century. Following a brief hiatus, I will discuss in a moment, a new elite residence was constructed that eventually modified, and, and was then eventually modified to resemble an atrium-style domicile by the 2nd century BCE. Um, so here we have more or less a continuous series of domestic occupations from the 8th century through the 2nd, 1st century BCE. Each phase of the hut house complex, up until the post fifth century hiatus, is marked by the existence of infant burials situated around and in communication with the physical occupation structure. These tombs come with a wide variety of, wide variety of grave good assemblages of various types, including high quality ceramic and bronze vessels, bronze personal adornments, and beads, pendants of amber, faience, bronze, silver, among other items. Um, and Mojeta and Cohen have a number of articles in, um, out and forthcoming on this series of burials. These burials present clear evidence for social stratification, long distance trade, as well as tantalizing clues that the cohabitation within the area of both elite buried in these rich burials and perhaps their non-elite dependents buried in similar, in simpler ceramic vessels um, in the same area. Although this relationship requires further clarification and our dreams of excavating the non-elite habitation spaces related to this elite complex have not yet been realized. Alongside these infant burials, the other most notable and numerous suite of material excavated from this nodal settlement is textile making tools. Um, four different types of objects have been recovered related to the production of textiles. Um, and here it's this kind of mess of colors on the middle right um, is the area CD complex. Um, these are spools, spindle whorls, loom weights, and tablets. Um, mostly it appears lost, dropped, or broken, and then reused in leveling fills, integral to maintaining even beaten earth floor surfaces across the area's sloping topography. The importance of textile production for nodal settlements in the area of Gavi has been apparent since Pietri Sestieri's work at Estero Delosa, but our excavations allow data for textile production to be contextualized with its settlement and tracked with greater chronological specificity. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, the assemblage itself, numbering approximately 229 objects to date, is notable both for what is present and what is absent. Spindle whorls and so-called spools predominate, making up a quarter and two-thirds of the assemblage respectively. Loom weights are notably absent. Only 16 have been recovered from the CD complex. This may be related to the manner in which these objects were disposed of after their use life came to an end. Lacking a clear destruction layer, it is possible that larger loom weights were less likely to end up in leveling fills than spindle whorls or spools, um, after all the use of loom weights in the area is attested as stereodolosa. The profile of the spools and spindle whorls, however, suggests that the absence might not be only down to differing taphonomic journeys amongst objects. The majority of spindle whorls are light in weight, I'm one side behind, sorry, uh, are light in weight between 8 and 30 grams, as are the spools between 10 and 50 grams, um, perhaps hinting that we're, they were used for spinning and weaving of lighter weight thread. Um, the recovery of two pierced bone plaques from deposits belonging to the complex, identified as tablets used in tablet weaving, suggests that this technique used to create elaborate belts and borders, but not practical for the production of more quotidian textile, may have been carried out and prevalent in this complex. The prevalence of lightweight spools, suggested by Ritter Knudsen and Gleba to be weights used for small scale or tablet weaving, the small size of most of the spindle whorls, as well as the discovery of tablet woven textile borders in the barriers of Osteo Delosa, 
Further suggests that this nodal settlement may lack loom wakes because spinning and tablet weaving were the predominant form of textile production within the elite core of this complex. If this is the case, more quotidian loom-based textile weaving was carried out elsewhere, perhaps in other nodal settlements or in the settlements of non-elite dependents we have yet to discover. While more data will help elucidate this relationship, it is evident that textile production in the CD complex played an active role in tying this nodal community together both internally and with other communities in the area beyond. The various phases of the CD complex produced com comparable sets of lightweight textile making tools, suggesting that this particular technique was passed down across generations as one method of reifying the social makeup of this particular nodal settlement. Um, here, I think it's, it's likely that, nodal, that tablet weaving was particularly a useful tool for reproducing elite identity, um, something I can talk about more in the questions. Um, it's clear by the fourth century that Gavi has transitioned from a multi, this multimodal series of communities to something more recognizably urban. Um, the CD compact is abandoned, a grid plan imposed upon the site seen here from our geophysical survey, um, and this suggests more centralized authority and community action. As, um, at the same time, a series of new elite domestic structures are built that occupy the same space as part, as part of this previous nodal settlement, particularly the house in plan on the right. Notably, many of the textile making tools so prevalent in the deposits belonging to the preceding three centuries are completely absent. Spools disappear along with associated small spindle whorls. Um, loom rates remain, but they all seem to be in tertiary or further deposition. Across two domestic structures and one monumental building full of material dated to the first phases of newly urban Akagabi, loom weights appear with greater frequency, but spools and spindle whorls disappear. They do not reappear in our later imperial or late antique deposits. Some type of violent disjunction, perhaps related to an expansionist Rome, might explain certain aspects of the reorganization we see at Gavi, but the disappearance of spools between the archaic and post-archaic period is not an isolated phenomenon at the site. Um, instead, the disappearance takes place across the Italian peninsula. I know of no spools or other textile making tools from post-archaic settlement deposits, although I would love to hear more about them if anybody knows of this. At the moment that Italian communities appeared across an urban boundary, this particular textile production system that was prevalent in the pre-urban period appears. Yeah, one minute left, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, since our material from Gavi comes close to preserving a continuous habitation across this boundary, I will use the rest of my one minute to try to make suggestions as to why this disjunction takes place. Um, we could be looking at shifting networks of display and exchange, um, necessitated by external focus on um, an external focus as central Italy becomes more connected, um, especially elite groups. Um, tablet weaving with its unique patterns might have been too individualized to effectively communicate status between urban sites. Uh, so a common productive technique gave way to other methods that produced more ubiquitous visual styles. Um, it's also oh, possible that kind of new technologies replaced this textile um, making process as markers of status, um, or that exogenous markers such as dyes, Hellenized textiles, or Hellenized production techniques um, replaced tablet weaving in with, out with the old and with the new. Um, Rome cannot be discounted, uh, and we also see probably a, a move away from domestic production, um, although this appears quite late along in the process, um, perhaps as more options for the acquisition of goods and the development of a monetized economy created greater market forces, and it was no longer expedient to spend so much energy producing this type of textile. Um, an increase in population within urban sites also may have meant more unaligned producers and craft production moving outside of elite hands. Um, there are, uh, this um, is certainly not a monocausal phenomenon, and there are other things that can be suggested, but it, it's also certain that these people who produced the tablet weaving did not all disappear across the Italian peninsula. Um, instead, they must have found better suited tools for this new urban environment. And if we take a look at these practices, we can perhaps understand the shifts as urban life across this fuzzy boundary between the pre-urban and urban Italian cities. And I will wrap up there so I stay on time. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.